Look at all that shiny diamond armor. What's up people? Welcome to episode 5 of the 1.16 Minecraft Survival Let's Play series. We're just standing by our villager breeder, which I actually gotta turn off because we are starting to get some lag from the amount of villagers that we have from this guy. Thought we should start off the episode with just a little simple redstone. We actually need to get our farm cleared up down there because I cannot reach the chest so I'm thinking of doing a little water elevator and if you bear with me here the water elevator is going to go right here which is to the side of the farm it's going to go under the terrain right here and the water is going to wrap around and it's going to shoot those blocks in the hoppers which is going to have chests hooked up to it so that took a lot longer than expected but I got the little item elevator all hooked up and as you can hear the annoying dispenser sound in the background but we just got four chests which should be plenty for now we'll definitely extend it out and actually get this whole thing filled up with chests but I didn't place it that great because there's a window right here and once we extend this guy all the way out it will block the window fully but with that being said we're actually going to move on to the next project of today which is going to be the iron farm I really didn't want to work on it last episode so I put it off so I'm going to look for a decent little spot for this guy and I will bring you guys back so I think this is going to be the location of the iron farm we're about I would say 120 blocks away from a little harbor and probably another 120 blocks from the savannah over there. I think this is a pretty solid spot and I've played it pretty safe here because if our villagers from the iron farm attracted the villagers over there, then the golems will just spawn in the middle. So I got ourselves a little scaffolding pillar going up, got a bed going because it, nighttime just fell and I had to sleep through that guy. But for the design we're going to be using for the iron farm, it's going to be Waddle's design. Really, really simple design and produces a massive amount of iron. So I'm going to get started with this guy. We got the beginnings to the farm hooked up here, the uh, villager holding pen and the zombie holding pen. And by the way, get yourself scaffolding people. It makes it so much easier to work on builds like this that are floating up in the sky. But I gotta go make a bridge that goes all the way across here to get our villagers over here. Then I'm gonna build out a little flat area and when night falls, hopefully a zombie spawns and I can get him in here. And just like that, the iron farm is completely done. Not the most beautiful thing ever, but definitely already producing tons of iron. So all we gotta do is head up this scaffolding right here, which is super perfect to use for this purpose actually now that i think about it i can't get through that trap door how am i going to get up here uh this is kind of confusing now i did not play my cards right okay so we're gonna have to lean over the edge just a little bit there we go and now we're up here and it's been probably running for like i would say five minutes and we already got 31 iron and nine poppies which is super super good that is insane so it's pretty late at night right now and since i just got this thing finished up i think we're gonna run a little afk session here but go check out Waddle's video on this farm. Super, super good. And I think there's a second video for improvements. I didn't really do any of the improvements to it. I think it'll be all fine. And I also added in this little AFK area right here, which normally he would not include. Good morning, good morning, people. It has now been like nine hours, I would say, since last time I logged on. And this is how much iron we got. This is pretty ridiculous, I think, for a farm this size. Only three villagers, one zombie. Pretty simple farm going on. And I don't even know how many stacks that is. That's like 20 plus stacks of iron right there, which is super sweet right there. I'm going to leave those guys in there and we're actually going to head back over to the base for a project I have planned. So if we actually run over here, last episode, I built up this house. I did not throw the time lapse in the video because like I said, it just went horrible. But I really do want to continue on this little area over here. So I think we're going to build up a house right about here. It's going to go into the mountain, I think, a little bit. And it's going to be our main storage room because that little house over there, the storage room just does not work for me it's we're running out of room not enough chest and i don't want to just overload the building with chests. so i'm gonna go gather some materials so i finally got all our blocks thrown together in this chest over here ton of different blocks a huge variety of them and i'm still deciding right now if we're going to be building this into the mountain back here kind of tough to decide because I don't want it to be too big of a building but it's definitely going to be the biggest one we've built so far in the series. I hope you guys enjoy it because it is going to be a very different build but I was thinking you know let's throw this into a time lapse.
Man, oh man, am I happy with how this thing turned out. We went with the smooth sandstone vibe and a little bit of like a subterranean level with just some stone kind of going out. Actually, there's no stone. It's cobblestone, andesite, and gravel, which I think turned out super cool. If we actually wrap around this side over here, we have a little part that sticks out. I was thinking of doing the front door over here. What's up, Mr. Skeleton? I was thinking of doing this part, the front door over here, but I actually just ended up deciding to do it right here because we do have this little overhang here. And I got some big plans to put inside this building that we're going to work on later in the episode. But as you can see, I actually did not do anything with the interior here. We got two skeletons. Take one out. Come on. Power hit. And we got that guy out. Man, is it nice having this uh, smite four here. But I think it's looking super good in here. So I'm just heading over to our absurdly big wheat farm because I think we're going to turn this guy into a library and I need to breed up the cows a little bit more. Get a few more pieces of leather going because I really want to have a ton of bookshelves in here. And lecterns are a little expensive now that I think about it. They do involve a bookshelf in each one and we're going to be putting our uh, librarian villagers in this building. So we're going to probably need, I would say, 10 to 12 lecterns, I would, I would think. That's about how many villagers I want to go with because I do want to have Mending Books, Sharpness 4, Looting 3, kind of all the super, super great books that aren't very common to get from an enchanting table. While those babies grow up, I think we should come in here and actually clear out a little bit of this land because we're going to have two floors in here, one for the villagers and then one for the main part of the library, which I don't know if I want to do the upstairs the library or the downstairs the library. I think it would be pretty cool having the bookshelves up against the smooth sandstone, but at the same time i have this really cool idea i think we could do for a library in the basement so i was grinding out getting a leather and sugar cane when i realized that we're going to be filling this place up with librarians and librarians have a uh what's it called a bookshelf trade so if we come over to this guy who's all cleared up not that one this one three emeralds for a bookshelf that is like totally worth it to me especially because we have over a stack of emerald blocks and so i just kept going with it and I'm, these guys are so this one was silk touch we got looting three we got unbreaking three this was mending which is super sweet 13 emeralds for a mending book we do not want to lose that guy and then the one down here i want to say it was fortune three i was going for efficiency but fortune's completely fine with me and we still have three more of these guys and three more of these guys so we could do more if we want to but i think i'm just going to wait and we're going to get this interior finished up i just grabbed about two stacks of emeralds here and we're just going to trade all these guys for bookshelves and it'll level this guy up so let's see if he gets another pretty ridiculous trade here i think another one is bookshelf yeah the lowest they go i'm pretty sure is three per and so that's pretty funny we got looting three and looting three and this one is a way better deal than that one so we got to keep that one in mind so if we run over to the house that will be housing our librarian villagers and our library in the basement i've dug out a decent amount here because i do want to stuff a ton of librarian villagers down here and i kind of have this cool design in my head that i want to get figured out so this is how we're gonna have the staircase going and just two stairs two block gap two stairs and then we're using spruce trap doors as like a little guide rail and for most of this basement slash library it's going to be a lot of oak and birch wood i think they go really good together especially if you do like oak on the floor and then birch as like this backdrop for the walls it looks super good up against the bookshelves besides the stairs i think we should actually start off figuring out where our villagers are actually going to be housed so each one of these birch blocks is going to represent a lectern so we're just going to kind of go through here and figure out where our villagers are going to be held i think two there, two there. We actually might try going three here. We might have to change this depending on how I design the downstairs, but we might try doing that so we can stuff a few more. We're probably gonna do two more. Actually, we'll do three on this side right here. So then that gets us up to eight. So then we can do a few more back here. I was actually gonna do like a tunnel going down this way and we might have our storage room on the end of this tunnel and then have a ton of librarian villagers lined up. Cause I would say we're probably gonna have out of all our villagers, there's definitely gonna be the most librarian villagers. I would say we're gonna try getting like 15 of these guys in here to get all of the super, super good uh, book trades. So I would say this is a pretty good representation of what this library is gonna look like. I might actually take out a few bookshelves here one, because we are almost out of bookshelves. We're down to six right now, and I did use 10 for lecterns, 
but still we are going through these things like crazy and I don't know if I like how busy it is so I might switch out for a few looms and I'm pretty sure the villagers shouldn't attract to the looms if they're already attracted to lecterns. Now that took me a lot longer than I thought it would but I'm happy to call this our library. I think it came out super good definitely reminds me of like a a cellar type library really like it we were able to get 12 spots for villagers to sit into and we still have an upstairs we can do but i am really really loving this build as you can tell i almost had it so it like pushes back towards the ground and then it slowly comes in almost as like an arching shape or a doming shape and i did these pillars along the sides here i did one there and one there and i would have liked to do one over there but i couldn't really get it to work because that cobblestone that mossy cobble up here this is actually all the outside of the building right here as our little like horsey area and i do have to cover this up so we might need to put some stone right there kind of shorten this little thing up a little bit but i am super happy with this a little thing to note that i did is i put barrels in here and you got to be careful just because the villagers could get attracted to them just like how i did looms we may have to remove these in the future if they do get attracted to them but if you do want to switch things up and put the barrels in you just got to do it above their eye level so you want to do it on the third block up and they will never get attracted to it little quick note to remember something very nice to know something we definitely need to do is we need to break into the villager breeder real quick because this thing is producing way 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 too many villagers so i gotta be a little careful how i go about this but we want to reach down okay so we're right there so we want to come over this direction and we all we got to do for this villager breeder is you just want to block the gap right there so now it should no longer breed any villagers because the height for the baby villagers is uh blocked right there pretty pretty simple thing he does explain that in the tutorial but just in case you skip past that or you ended the video, you can just do that right there. Or if you don't have a slime ball for a sticky piston. So I'm just over at the curing area for the villagers. I've been working so hard here. I've probably spent like 30 minutes now trying to get an efficiency four or efficiency five guy. I got a few other guys over here. It's a little laggy right now because the villager breeder has way too many villagers in there right now. But we got a respiration three and we got a sharpness five, which I thought was a insane deal. But I'm gonna keep working at this guy and try getting a efficiency four. So I ended up just giving up on the uh, efficiency four, but I think respiration for one emerald is pretty good. And I also think sharpness five for 40 emeralds is a little bit steep there but I don't think we can do anything about it. So I'm just gonna leave that guy. And for this guy, I'm pretty sure I went with impaling five for like 13 diamonds before being cured. So that's pretty, pretty good. So I'm gonna get these guys moved over. I already got a bridge built up because I already have five of the other villagers that were all cured up in there already. So I'm gonna get these guys over there right now. So I got a lot of our villagers actually down into the library here and I've just been trading with them a ton. Got most of them near maxed out. And if they're not maxed out, they're pretty close to it. I think these three guys are no this one is not but we got some really good books from some of these guys like this guy is super good silk touch smite five infinity and then another silk touch which is super sweet and then we have our sharpness five guy over here who hasn't really been giving us the greatest of trades we got depth strider and sharpness five and then crappy protection one and then we come over to this guy looting three looting three efficiency two so on our next batch of getting these villagers because we still have i want to say four more spots we need to get an efficiency four or five guy by the first book because i do not want to take our chances but our mending guy is not very good either i mean he has mending which is fine with me but Frostwalker one and feather falling two and then this guy is just respiration three so we may actually switch this guy out in the future but to give you guys a little look on how much trading i've been doing if we look in some of these barrels which are hidden we have have different books so infinity in there and they're gonna get pretty confusing I might actually have to make like almost a separate library or entrance that has all our barrels but this one is two sharpness fives those are super expensive to get those are 35 emeralds per book which is definitely a steep price this one is the crazy one this one guy I've gotten tons of impaling five and tons of protection for so we have all of this being protection four, and then we have a ton of impaling five and then we come over to this one I think that's empty 
that's empty this should be empty and then we have two mending books and no, we're down to one mending book i still got to get more of those and then a crap load of respiration three i absolutely destroyed our emerald supply while trading with those guys so we're going to go down to the farming villagers and we actually got to get a bit more trading done that should be enough melons and pumpkins so i'm going to trade with these guys real quick so i just did about three rounds of trading with these guys took a little bit but it came out very very nice check this out guys we got almost nine stacks of emeralds here so let's actually craft these guys into emerald blocks and see oh we got more than nine stacks of emeralds actually just a little bit more three more than that so our emerald supply is back up to how it was before we even started trading with those guys so i finally got ourselves an efficiency four villager after way way too long that was like an hour and a half worth of work just to get this guy and all i was doing was going like that and then just breaking it and just going back and forth like that and this guy finally popped up and i'm almost done with this whole downstairs but there's this one villager right here and he does not want to go right there. He just doesn't want to. He doesn't He doesn't even care about the lectern. He doesn't want to go into the spot. I even blocked off the whole area. This one's still blocked off because that's where he was going. And he still is not managing to make it over even in this general vicinity. So I still got to get this guy in here. And why don't you look at that? We got this place completely filled up with villagers. We got, I want to say it's 12 villagers down here. No, we're up to 15 villagers, which is perfect with me. 15 books we can get. Actually, that's more than 15 because each or some of these guys have like, okay, that's not a good example. This is a decent example. So three books all from this one guy. And these two are very cruddy, but this one's pretty good. Mending book is always going to be good with me. Uh, this guy, I think, was the one who had really good ones. He has Silk Touch, Smite 4, and Fortune 3 from one guy. And I'm really wondering what this guy's going to have. I mean, I'm super excited we got Efficiency 4 now. Because now we will never have to really enchant ever again. I probably still will. But we can make all of our perfect pickaxes just from the Librarian Villagers within this room. So at this point, I can finally get rid of this railroad track and bridge. Because to finish off the episode, I actually want to extend that little cliffside out right over here and have it go by behind uh, the second house we built right there. So I'm gonna get this guy taken down and I will bring you guys back. So for the end of the episode, we're actually gonna extend the cliff out here behind our second house we built, which houses our enchantment table. And we're gonna carry this cliff all the way over to the wheat farm right back there. And it's pretty noisy outside right now because there's a rainstorm going on. So I think we're gonna throw this into a episode ending time lapse. So I'm just gonna say it here. Thank you guys for watching very much. Hope you enjoy the time lapse and I will see you in the next episode.